But now um, we don't want to hear from FEMA. So uh, Sherry Mize Rightum is here to help us understand what the federal government has made available as a resource to us to help this community recover. The mission of FEMA is, is pretty broad reaching and I'm gonna try and tailor my remarks to this audience and this locale. Um, fortunately for me, I am not a local resident, so um, uh, I can't personalize this in any way, but I want you to know that FEMA representatives take to heart the pain and the losses that you have, and um, we're very sensitive to that. <clears throat> Um, I generally work with the individual housing program, but the FEMA mission is much broader than that, and I will try to touch on some of that as I speak. Um, the, the, if you go away with one thing tonight at all from me, I want you to remember that the deadline for applying for FEMA is March 16th. You can apply online. You can apply out in the lobby tonight. You can apply by phone. And there are flyers out there that have the contact information. That deadline and that application becomes your key in order to access not only funds that are directly granted you, to you to offset some of the costs, but to access the Small Business Administration loans, which is a low interest loan program for homeowners, renters, and businesses. The second thing I'd like you to know is that even if you don't want to take a loan, I suggest that you, you add that to your list of many, many items that you um, need to accomplish because you right now you might say i don't want a loan i don't need a loan but three or four months down the line you might say boy i wish i had that available to me so um, um, we have experts at the lac at the calvary church and when we get the disaster recovery center that was mentioned up, we will have SBA representatives there that can process your application. Essentially, FEMA's program is not to make you whole again, but to give you just enough to survive and, and be able to function. So our grants are limited to making your home sanitary, functional, and safe. And I know that's a very, very basic level, so that what that means if you have a five bedroom home and there are two people living there and they share a bedroom, FEMA's only going to assist with finding you um, or replacing the belongings in one bedroom. Um, we don't replace food. We rely very, very heavily on the local community. This county is by far the most organized, cohesively um, uh, cooperative county I have ever met in my FEMA experience. And <laughs> this, this disaster is very complex. There's a lot of pieces to it. Um, there are populations that are computer literate and uh, have administrative skills, and there are populations that don't that were affected. And we need to, as, as advocates for you, is to represent all of those people who are affected, whether directly or indirectly. Um, the two, the, he mentioned alternative living expenses. FEMA will, will assist people with paying those uh, or, or reimbursing um, people for hotel expenses they've already incurred. 
But this is important. We don't duplicate benefits. So if your insurance is already paying for that, we're most likely not going to pay for alternative living expenses. And FEMA would not pay for um, the level of, of home that, as he said, is, is your right under your insurance policy. You know, it, we're going to just assist with rental assistance if needed for um, whatever number of bedrooms you need. The county is working really hard to find available housing. The volunteer agencies um, are coming together to build a long-term recovery plan. That will include crisis counseling. I can't encourage you enough to take advantage of that. You will find over the coming weeks that things you used to do that were so easy to um, go to work, maintain your house, keep your bills paid, run around after three children, that's not easy anymore. So you need to do, as they said, just take it one step at a time. On your team, I recommend that you have somebody available to you who is an organizer, who, who is compulsive about staying organized and following lists, because that's what you're going to need in order to identify those buckets. It, that oftentimes people will come into the disaster recovery center with somebody like that to help. Um, FEMA also can replace essential personal property. So our program is not going to help with um, your 54-inch TV or multiple computers, but we will assist with tools of the trade, essential tools that, that you or the people you know um, have lost due to the disaster. So um, you, if, for example, they had um, yard tools, landscaping tools, and those were lost, those kinds of things can be replaced by FEMA. In addition, we have um, moving and storage. As you move out of your homes, um, you may, and repairs are being made, you may need to move things into storage, and that is something we also might be able to assist with. Again, it's just essential items, though. The other area that we will pay for is medical, dental, lost vehicles, funerals, additional child care costs, um, and things like that. In order to um, qualify for any of these things, we would need for you to have your insurance statements made available to us so that we can compare benefits. If something is denied by your insurance, that's when FEMA might be able to kick in. If you don't have insurance, that's where FEMA can step in and assist. There, there are a couple other um, things I want to talk about. On that loan program, um, for personal property losses. FEMA, as I said, is focused on essentials. But through this SBA loan program, they can assist you to replace some of those items. You never get the emotional content back, but just being able to have the extra vehicle or, or um, um, some of the, the nice things that you had in your home before, uh, I really recommend that, that you look into that. One of the things that we do at the Disaster Recovery Center is we make referrals to other agencies. IRS has a disaster loss program, 
in this situation, as the cost of your home may have, the, pardon me, the value of your home may have been diminished, um, they have a way to um, claim that it, as a loss on your taxes. I'm not an IRS expert and I'm not gonna get into it. Uh, you can look into it online or talk to your accountants. They should be pretty cl clear away f um, you know, uh, clear about the details of it. Also, agricultural losses. There, there are programs to assist with the replacement of animals and um, farm machinery and things like that through the Department of Agriculture. Um, I'm trying to think of some other federal agencies that we might refer you to, but that's the bulk of it, and I really hope that you can go ahead and, and do that. Um, I, I know I'm just hitting this very, very briefly. We have pretty good guidance online, but if I can encourage you to do anything is to get that insurance settlement into FEMA and to register for FEMA, that would be great. Oh, I'm sorry, I do want to mention disaster unemployment assistance. This is a program that's operated by the state, and people can receive, um, replace, can receive funds, unemployment assistance for lost wages. And I know a lot of businesses are down, SBA can help with, um, some of those kinds of loans, but disaster unemployment is really important to people that haven't been able to get up the 101 to get it to jobs and things like that. And they have a pretty straightforward process on the um, California Unemployment Office site. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sherry.